Christmas. <laughs> It's Jeff. Uh, glad you're all here to watch uh, my video. I had a, uh, uh, I was watching some stuff on YouTube here uh, yesterday or last night, and uh, they were talking about, uh, you know, these some of these people that go around and they murder, you know, like serial killers and stuff, and uh, and. The common thing that happens, I guess, in a lot of those cases that you find is that these people, a lot of them, have mental problems because of the way they were brought up as kids. And because of the really bad crimes that they committed, um, juries are not really interested in hearing excuses or anything like that about uh, why they why they did what they did, you know, or what pushed them to do it. <laughs> and um, <laughs> the thing of it is, is they, in a lot of cases, you know, they're from poor families that didn't have uh, the means to uh, treat these individuals before they were put out into society. And they probably just didn't care or they didn't recognize the problems or, or see that there was a problem. And that seems to be like a common thing about a lot of these serial killers is that they had a past that was really troublesome. Now, some of us might look back at things that happened to us as kids and we say, well, I went through bad times and I'm fine and I don't kill people. And that's true. There are people that, you know, have gone through some really tragic times as, as children and stuff and they live uh, lawful and law-abiding lives. But I don't, you know, there's a thing about people and, and human, humanity, and that's every one of us has a breaking point. It's never the same, okay? But a lot of us will break under pressure that somebody else could take. And because one person can take a lifestyle that they had as a child growing up <clears throat> and continue to live their life without problems doesn't mean that somebody else could. Uh, human mind is very strange that way. It's We're not robots. We're not programmed to all do the same thing. Um, and because, you know, we all have different families, different parents, and we have different genes, and all this stuff, all this stuff together creates a person. And, you know, the, the code in each of us is unique only to us, just like our fingerprints are. And so when somebody on the stand talks about their past, you know, how they're, they're, maybe they were a, a person had been sexually assaulted or, or raped, you know, frequently as they were growing up by a parent or something, um, or they were beaten or um, you, you name it, you know, beaten or, or tortured in some way. And there's been a lot of heinous stories that, that came out in the past about children that were found, you know, basically treated like animals <coughs> in some people's uh, basements or something like that, which is really, really sick, you know, when somebody does something like that. But, um, you know, my, my thing is, is the bar set too high in court to use the, you know, insanity plea or, or something like that. I mean, is it is it really set too high? Because a lot of these, a lot of these people, they go to court uh, for like, let's say, murder or, or more. Um, 
and uh, there, you know, somebody brings up the, the report that a doctor had seen them and decided that uh, they were fit to stand trial. Um, and yet you see their behavior in court as being very awkward. Like there was this, for an example, um, there's this old lady, like 65 or something, who killed her son-in-law because, and her, you know, uh, was her claim was that they didn't get along. And for years, um, you know, she didn't kill this guy for a long time, but it's just that, you know, he, she said that he used to make fun of her, poke at her or something like that, you know, or, or you know, and um, she didn't like him. And one day she just got a gun, went up there and shot him and reloaded the gun uh, th three times, 15 shots into this guy. And when the police picked her up and they questioned her, she clapped and laughed and, oh, he's dead, he's dead. <laughs> you know, and she was acting you know, like she, you know, she was celebrating. Didn't matter at all that she was gonna go to prison for it, but she just was happy that he was dead. Now this is on YouTube, it's, you know, and her family was all in tears and everything because now she was going to go to prison for the rest of her life. And oddly enough, the state doctor uh, deemed her fit for trial. And I'm thinking, well, just by looking at the police interview, you could tell this woman uh, was very demented, okay? There's no way a demented person like that could possibly be deemed fit to stand trial because she doesn't even care. You know, she doesn't even care about what she did, and and uh, she feels like you know it was time to put this guy down, and she did. And uh, and this was just you know this was her only murder was this guy, and they didn't seem to care at all about what she said about things that he was kind of doing to, you know, saying to her and stuff that was making her pissed. Um, so they deemed her fit to stand trial, and through the whole trial, I guess she was just, you know, making faces and rolling her eyes and, you know, giggling and stuff. I mean, that that's not a normal person. That's not a person of a, of a sound mind. I mean, she don't even care, okay? And you know, at her age and stuff, I'm thinking, well, you know, maybe she's suffering with early forms of Alzheimer's or something like that. I mean, did they even check that out or did they even, you know, uh, see that there was anything wrong with her mentally? A lot of people go their whole life with a mental problem and then just one day they snap, you know? <laughs> and so, it, you know, it started me wondering about you know, the death penalty and, and, you know, how we use it on the mentally ill in this country uh, without really giving them much, much uh, credence over the fact that maybe what, what happened to them in their past was more damaging than we look, than, we're, than we think, okay? That, you know, if somebody, <clears throat> you know, had a really troubled past and as a child, and, and the signs were there as they were growing up that the kid was doing weird things like killing little pets and, and uh, um, you know, dissecting them. You know, kind of like what, uh, uh, what was his name there, um, Jeffrey Dahmer was doing. Um, and this was early, early on, okay, but the parents just let it slide. Now, if there was a history of that, then you would say, well, we, you know, we can't possibly put this guy to death because he had a mental problem. I mean, it's part of the reason he did what he did. And so instead of putting him to death, they ought to put him in a prison for the criminally insane. Um, because uh, a person like that, you know, putting him to death seems to be a little bit inhumane, you know, to, um, I mean, because if you're going to do that, if you're going to put a person with a mental problem that severe in to death, then you might just as well round up the parents who didn't do anything to, to uh, stop this or, or to correct this problem. You might as well put them in prison for life. Aren't they just as uh, complicit in what, it, what their son or their daughter did, you know, when they were growing up? Especially if it came out that they abused them, sexually abused them, or did something, you know? I mean, shouldn't they round up the parents and put them in prison uh, for the, you know, 
because they all ought to be taking the blame, not just the not just the one person, but the whole family. Because it takes a village, you know, to make or break a, a kid, and you know, and it just seems to me like, <coughs> you know, like in Jeffrey Dahmer's case, you know, the parents just weren't there like they were supposed to be. They just they saw the signs and they didn't put the you know put it two two together. And they weren't stupid people, okay, and. You know, they, they just didn't want to friggin' admit to themselves that the kid, well, you know, was having problems. He, you know, was something wrong with him mentally? He wasn't behaving like a normal person. Okay, and then it leads up to that. Well, that ought to make it's like you know, you you you, you, you spark, you light a friggin' stick of dynamite, and if it goes off, you blame the dynamite, right? <laughs> so you don't blame the idiot that's, that that uh, lit it, right? And. To me, that's how I see it, that, you know, the parents allowed this thing to happen, you know, in, in these cases, and uh, when, when disaster hit, uh, so, I just, like I said, I have a problem about that, about our country, you know, putting, you know, mentally disabled people to death, and, and, it's, and, it's, got, and it's happened a lot of times. Um, they, they've made like friggin' TV movies about some of these people who have, who just basically mentally just melted down, you know, from schizophrenia or some damn thing, and they went and done some, you know, uh, they went and killed up kids or something like that, and then shot themselves after, you know, I mean, it's just, there's so much out there that suggests that, you know, people with mental problems aren't always in control of their actions because they, they just don't feel like they're in reality. And when, they, when they're in court and they behave like it's nothing, that's another sign that they don't feel like they're really in reality, that the, to them it's just a, you know, a dream or some damn thing. And, you know, I think that these people shouldn't shouldn't have this, this most severe punishment uh, given to them because they're <clears throat> because of what they did, they wouldn't have done it had they, their minds been better, you know, if it, if it wasn't like a crime of passion, you know, like a, a husband shooting his wife because of some, you know, uh, problem that they had, you know, the wife was running around on him or something and the guy just flipped and the guy never had a bad background, right? So, yeah, you could see the death penalty for something like that, but... You know, you're always going to have that little knot in your stomach that, you know, we put this guy to death, but he had a long history of abuse <laughs> that, that molded his mind into this uh, demented thing. And killing the guy doesn't really help anything if, if you're not, if you're not going to try to prevent crimes like this in the future. This is all stuff that doctors can learn from uh, by examining this person while they're serving time and trying different treatments on them to see if it works. You know, this this would be perfect proving grounds for that. <clears throat> and I think that's, uh, that's the best thing you can do. And I realize that there's a need for vengeance in crimes like that. And um, well, let's have a commercial break here and we'll get back to that. I'm Woodsy Owl, and I'm here to tell you about a dirty word, pollution. Help Woodsy spread the word. Never be a dirty bird. Hoo-hoo. Don't paint or write off buildings. That's pollution. Give a hoot. Don't pollute. Never be a dirty bird. Hoo-hoo. Turn your radio down. That's noise pollution. In the city or in the woods, help keep America looking good. Okay, 
everybody. We're back. So, um, I'm talking about how some people feel that we ought to put mentally help, uh, damaged people to death because if they commit a murder or something like that, that's the, that's the best thing we should do for them. Okay? Um, that's, that's sort of like the, uh, prevailing opinion in our society. There are people that don't believe that. Um, I can't say I'm, you know, 100% <clears throat> either way on that either, but it does give me pause to wonder, you know, when you hear about these stories about people who killed and then they dig up their past and they explain what they went through as kids and you're thinking, well, Jesus, you know, if they knew all this going into the trial, why the hell didn't they, you know, why didn't they understand that this guy was broken mentally? You know? <clears throat> And you, and you say, you know, this is, this is really crazy that, you know, people are just going to treat him like a, a, a sane person and just throw him in prison or throw him in uh, to the chair, death penalty. It's crazy that people will just say, yeah, yeah, kill the guy, kill the bastard. You know, just like, you know, they just want to sweep the, the shit under the rug, basically. They don't want to see it anymore. But, you know, these none of these people that ever had anything happen to them ever felt like they really got justice, even if the person gets... Uh, executed or whatever you call it. <clears throat> so, it, you know, like I said, it just it gives me pause to think that you know maybe we're just a little, maybe the bar is set just a little too high for people to meet the criteria of being un, you know unstable for a for a trial or whatever it is, or to you know be mentally insane to. You know, be sent into a, a you know, a, an institute or whatever you want to call it for people that are sick like that. Um, but with with all these people out there, you know, pushing for the death penalty, and, and you know, and I guess in some states, if you know, when for a while it's they pro death penalty, and then for a while they're against it. Um, <clears throat> you know, I just feel like there's, there's, there's gotta be some thought given to, uh, you know, instead of just death or no death, whether we should put s certain people to death that have a bad history of, of a, you know, a mental problem that they might have signs that were there, you know, that they were growing up to, uh, that suggested that they had some difficulty adapting uh, to, you know, to life. And, uh, you know, I guess, you know, in the teen years, it's the time to really pay attention to your to your son or your daughter. Because um, it seems like in the teen years, the mind gets formed. And then you might see signs of something, you know, if you're unlucky, that... You know, your son or your daughter is doing some weird stuff <laughs> in some way, and it might be a sign that there could be some uh, underdevelopment of the human of their mind. You know, and they might need some psychological assessment to see if there is something there that you know they can be treated for before they get into their twenties. Because it seems like when people get into their twenties. Um, they can really destroy their life, and it, and it happens a lot. I mean, it seems like if there's going to be any trouble in a person's life, okay, uh, it's going to happen in their 20s for some reason. And it seems like when they, when their minds are formed during their teen years, they go out into society for the, you know, first time, and in their 20s is really that the, the uh, effects of what happened as they grew up really take hold and because they're they're confronted with different situations and stresses in their life that start to push their buttons to you know mental buttons if you as it were and we begin to see that you know there's signs there that these uh, individuals are uh, you know they're not able to handle things because for some reason their mind just didn't form right or they just didn't do anything right or 
or whatever happened in their past is coming out to to, to haunt them in some way. <clears throat> So I, I feel like it's, it's really important that people should really understand the person that committed a, some heinous crimes to really to sit down and take, take an evaluation of, you know, how that might have impacted them um, and maybe try to put it, put themselves in that situation. Like, how would you have dealt with that? You know, if, if you, uh, you know, if these things happened to you, you know, would you, do you think you would still be still be uh, a rational enough in your life to be able to know right from wrong or that or was that taken away from this person because the parent was so obviously uh, damaged themselves that they just couldn't teach that kid right from wrong you know that instead they only taught the kid um, hatred and anger and um, you know how to how to avoid people you know not feeling comfortable around people and uh, like I said everybody has a breaking point they, they all do I mean some people could uh, as a kid probably could withstand that and still be functional enough in society without causing a, causing problems and uh, other people wouldn't some people would would really wouldn't make it through their their kid years they would probably you know try to commit suicide or something like that um, so it's really, um, it's, it's really necessary for the, for juries to really not rush to judgment, not push the death penalty so hard. Um, like, you know, it's a, it's a done deal. Okay. Because life is not black and white, even in a murder case, it's not a black and white thing. There's always many shades of gray. Um, and uh, we, have to, we have to take into account those shades of gray when we decide on a person's fate. And I think courts have to reevaluate the standards by which they um, label somebody as being uh, insane. Because to me, a lot of things get by in court, in trials, that get revealed during the trial process and you wonder, how the hell did this slip by the friggin', uh, you know, the doctor that deemed this person fit to stand trial? Because obviously, they had such a terrible history that hardly anyone could have survived that. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, it's sad that somebody got killed, or many people got killed. And I understand that, you know, you got vengeance out there that people want to, uh, want to reach for. And... For some people, when they see somebody get put to death, they feel better for it. Others, they don't. Because um, they still have that hole in their life where the person that they loved is gone. And they're going to live with that for the rest of their life. I mean, loss is a hard thing to deal with for anybody. Okay, there is no such thing as, as a, uh, when you grow up, you, you get mature enough to be able to handle loss of any kind. Okay? We constantly are faced with loss, and because we just don't want to give up the people that we uh, we have in our little uh, community of, of uh, support, <clears throat> you know, we just don't want to do that because it's a it changes your life, you know, and people are afraid of that. People are afraid of change, and so we wonder how we're going to go on without this person how how is this going to change everything that i know you know if my, the comfort zone that i've been in how is this going to affect us and there's no real answer for that you just have to live and adapt um, when you adapt that's when you figure out how to how to keep going um, but you have to let yourself adapt to the loss but always putting these criminals to death to me is, you know, without really, really talking to them and understanding what, what the hell made them the way they are, <clears throat> um, you're, you're missing an opportunity there to try and learn something to prevent future criminals from, or, you know, future incidents like this. 
it's all information that people need to have. I mean, people complain, oh, there's no book out there that tells you how to raise your kid. Well, maybe we ought to make a book that tells you how to raise your kid. You know, maybe we ought to dig into some of these people's backgrounds that committed crimes and stuff like that and find out what happened to them, you know, when they grew up. What was what was hap what was neglecting them? Uh, what did they miss out in their upbringing that might have made a difference if they, if they had it, you know? What things could have happened? And then... You, you put that, you publicize it, so that way people understand you can't do this, you can't, you know, you can't treat your kid like this, you can't um, talk to them that way, or you can't, you know, physically slap them, or you hit them, or whatever, you know, you know what I'm saying? That these things, you know, even though they depend on the person, the child, or whoever, that might have some kind of a stronger hide to take that kind of stuff, not all of them are, and why take the chance that they are? when they may not be. So, <clears throat> you know, and plus we don't really care that very well for our, our mentally disabled in this country. There's a lot of people, homeless, unable to get care. They're mentally disabled and they're out on the streets. Um, why do we let that happen? You know, why do we let these people suffer when we could do something? They could be these people could be potential criminals that might end up in prison for them or on death row, but society could have done something to help this individual. You know, <clears throat> I just don't feel like we ought to just let that go on, you know, um, and that more care needs to be given to people that have uh, dysfunctions and stuff. And, and I really think that during this pandemic that's going on right now, a lot of those things are probably being ignored, um, and they shouldn't be. It's very critical that you know people that are that aren't really healthy mentally need to get that care that they desperately need because that could change their life, and make them more productive citizens. So, anyway, uh, that's what I want to talk about here uh, today. And, uh, Anyway, take care everybody. Bye.